So we are going to be live streaming on YouTube as well and uh, let the world see our faces and our uh, presentation. Okay, so officially we are kicking off with the 44th webinar of the networking and learning group. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Ms. Indu Bhuvanesh among us for presenting this wonderful uh, session. And it's a great privilege to host as well. So the 44th webinar is titled Master the Art of Holistic Decision Making. And I am really uh, inspired and very much excited to know what about, I mean, the whole concept about holistic decision making. And I'm sure that all the members would be really watching close to learn more. Thank you again for your registration with us. Almost 10 to 15 people registered with us. Let's hope that people will join. Thank you for the six people who are live with us today. And as usual, NLG is founded out by pure passion and uh, inspiration. And these are the two guys responsible for NLG on the screen. Sushma, uh, anything about HR? Sushma is the person and uh, she's an amazing HR professional, uh, an amazing person by heart as well. Uh, an NLP master practitioner, and she is about uh, passionate about human touch and feelings and emotions. And her uh, sessions are creating an impact and positive difference by unleashing potential within people. So, if you know, if you want to know about uh, the HR activities, about being a person, you can really approach Sushma. And myself, my name is Jason Abraham. I also am with Sushma in uh, helping NLG to go to the next level. I'm basically a storyteller. I love stories. I love to hear people's stories. And my mission is to connect with 100,000 people uh, before 2021 ends. I don't know whether I would be successful, but it's a mission. It, it, not be a, it might not be a mission impossible, but still, let's see. So going ahead, we have two amazing pillars of NLG. And these are the two guys responsible for the upgradation, the development, the uh, positive impacts which are which we are going on throughout our screen which you are sh seeing on the screen uh, and uh, back back end as well so mr takudin teparambil uh, he's a qhc professional an entrepreneur enthusiast he has recently started a firm and he's an mba in hr and msc in biotechnology an amazing guy anil kunuku again he's an hr professional a toastmaster uh, he has a segment called ak thoughts which is uh, about uh, sending codes, I mean, writing codes every morning to our WhatsApp channels. And uh, she, uh, he is associated with uh, Singapore based university to mentor students. So he's an amazing guy as well. These two are the pillars of NLG. So NLG's mission is to network, to learn, to share knowledge. And these are the pure three missions of NLG. Nothing financial about it, no monetary gains. Only NLG is to spread knowledge and education. We have two segments of NLG. One is NLG League and NLG Carriers. NLG League is all about education, learning together, spreading knowledge. NLG Carriers, we focus on distributing uh, vacancies over online, but these are actually shared vacancies. And uh, we get forwarded messages and LinkedIn through different channels, LinkedIn, Telegram. But we are here to help people out. We are not a recruiting firm or something like that, but we are able to help people out. If anybody is lucky to get a uh, response or get a vacancy I and mean, interview through that, uh, we would be happy to know about it as well. So these are the two pillars and there are different modes of channel to co connect with us, Telegram, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, LinkedIn. These are the primary basic channels to connect with us. There are some basic rules to follow uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, please mute your audio because the speaker won't be disturbed otherwise. Um, uh, use chat box for the comments and uh, you may raise your hands for further discussions, anything. You may take notes or screenshots and you are free to engage in uh, discussion at the end of the session as well. These are some uh, posters of the NLG's previous uh, conducted webinars. We have been successful in conducting 43 webinars and today we have been successful in uh, 44th webinar. So welcoming again, Ms. Sindhu. Uh, thank you for joining again for the 44th webinar of NLG. Over to you, Ms. Sindhu, for the further session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason, for leading us through all of the highlights in the journey of NLG. It was good awareness for me as well 
you have recreated all of those moments in a nutshell for all of us here beautiful it's, and i'd like to begin sushma's job it's all sushma's job oh yes i was just about to begin um, expressing my gratitude to sushma for reaching out in the first place uh, for making me uh, be able to meet all of you today and to share my learnings over the years and some theoretical aspects that i have picked up and out of my therapeutic practices what i found useful so i'm presenting both of that as a bouquet to all of our members attending right now so once again i'd like to bring in a moment of resonating with what we are dealing with right now in life so that will help us you know bring ourselves to the room to you know take us deeper into the discussion that we are about to have i'd also like to tell you it is not about expanding knowledge i think so much of it is outside available already so what i would like to offer is maybe an insight something that we can take home even if there's one thing that we can apply if that can make our lives better that's exactly what i'd wish for each of us here so i'm also looking forward to learning from your sharings uh, your experiences that you may want to share with the group so we will make the best out of our interaction right here so as we begin can we just close our eyes for a moment watch our natural breathing right now there may be many things that you are hearing within you it could be telling you about time it can be reminding you about dinner it can be reminding you of all of that you have left back from work listen to all of that our idea is to not resist any of those thoughts i'm taking care of the admissions my friends so our host here be peaceful in the practice whatever we resist continues to persist so the idea is to not invest our energy in suppressing anything the idea is to accept with a lot of grace and move on with a lot of ease so acknowledge every thought that comes into your mind the key is not to travel with any of them not to get engrossed in all of those thoughts that surface in our minds just like if we stand out on our balcony or at our entrance we will notice dozens of vehicles passing by we notice them from a neutral standpoint and we allow them to pass by we do not intend to travel in each of those vehicles do we thoughts are just as similar my friends they will come in all shapes all sizes all varieties the idea is to notice allow them to pass by and if there is a choice that you are making intentionally then you will stop by get on to that vehicle board it and make use of that commutation the idea here is to be able to be clear in terms of what we need and to keep what works for us and to discard anything that may be unhelpful so with that thought watch your breath now we are not altering it just watch it the way it is and as you breathe in bring your awareness to your head center that's where most of our job today is about to be the thinking center so as you inhale thank your thinking center for being able to do all those decisions for you and as you exhale send out all of those self doubts limitations nagging questions out of your system 
one more time as you inhale focusing on your thinking center inhale strength exhale weakness inhale positivity exhale negativity and gently shift your focus on to your heart center as you continue to watch your natural breathing keep your awareness and attention around your heart center decisions are lot to do with our emotions and feelings as well watch what goes into the making of your decisions most often than not my friends our decisions our choices of our heart how we feel about doing something or how we feel about not doing something so with all the gratitude let us focus on our heart center as we inhale let us invite the cosmos to give us the emotional wisdom to make better choices as we exhale let us expel any kind of doubts or difficulties in our capacity to handle the decisions that we make and the repercussions of our decisions one more time as we inhale let's bring the focus onto our heart center giving it all the more strength love energy compassion to be able to know, do better decision making as we exhale let us send out all of those moments which depreciate our self love which bring down our love for others because of the decisions they have made in our lives or because of the decisions that we have made for ourselves one more time as we inhale let us invite the cosmic energy to provide and fill our system with love and compassion which will guide all the decisions that we will be taking henceforth and as we exhale let us send out all of those unhelpful emotions of grudge vengeance shame guilt anger resentment and when you are done kindly shift your focus to your moving center your hands and legs which take you where you want enable you to do what you want to do your decisions get manifested when they take the form of actions so let us express our gratitude for our moving center as you inhale invite strength and courage to be able to do all that you want to do decisions are only matter of the paper if they don't take the form of actions so as you exhale send out any kind of energia inability to give life to your decisions as you inhale breathe in all the energy that you need to fuel and boost your moving center as you exhale send out all the weaknesses setbacks obstacles that you may have or experience in terms of being able to bring your decisions to life one more time inhale strength positivity and energy exhale inertia inability and weakness and when you have done that let the process culminate in the form of drawing in energy through your heart center visualize a white colored energy entering your heart center gently visualize this energy going down your heart center all the way filling your stomach abdominal region pelvic region thighs knees calf muscles ankles all the way down to your foot and the tips of your toes also visualize this white energy spreading 
from your solar plexus area to your chest cavity, your hands, shoulders, neck region, head, and from above your head, connecting to the ethereal world around you. And once you have done that, invite an energy from above to be able to guide you, to tell you the difference between the right and the wrong and to enable you to make better decisions in life. The decisions that will change your life for the better. And when you have that support of the divine and you, when you have filled in to your heart's content, your thinking center, your feeling center and your moving center with the divine grace and self-love, kindly come back on at your own convenient pace. Bring your hands together. Bring in the warmth that you need. Cup them on your eyes. Let that warmth radiate from your eyes throughout your body. May this warmth, wisdom and compassion be experienced by everyone who comes into contact with you. Hence. So I'd like you to keep your videos on if possible so that we can connect and interact better. So on that note, I'd like you to put your pens to paper before we begin the presentation. With that higher frequency that is vibrating in the room right now, look at the different areas of your life. Pick one area that you want to move forward, something that you're dealing with, that you want to make a decision and something is perhaps coming in the way. If there is some clarity that we are seeking in there, let's pick that area, name it, define it, put it down on paper. We'll take a couple of minutes to do that. Once you have done that, write down what are the things that you need to be giving up to make this happen. you have put it down already give me a thumbs up or a nod so I'll know if you need more time please feel free to let me know okay thanks for putting it out yeah got it so once you have put down what you need to give up take a moment to make an assessment of what are the skills that you already have to make these decisions come true what are the skills that you have already If you have done that, look at what are the skills that you need to acquire that you may not be having right now. What are the skills that you need to acquire in order to be able to manifest all your goals, to make your decisions come alive?
you have done that now let's focus on who are the people in your life who are crucial to support you in these choices that you are about to make or who are the ones who will be involved in this process either of decision making or implementation of these decisions it is very significant to include them because that is why most often plans do not work if we are not quite aware of the other people who will contribute to our decision if we keep them outside the scope of our decision things do not work as the way we have planned so bring down those people with regard to this area who are the ones who support you will need So once you have done that, do you need a little more time? Have all of you done that? Okay, fine. So once you have done that, put down, how will you know you have achieved what you set out to achieve? What are the pointers or the highlighters that will tell you that you have achieved what you wanted? Once you have done that, go on to visualize what your life will be once you have manifested these goals. This again, my friends, is very crucial and vital for us to see ourselves at our destination. Otherwise, it is lingering in the abstract form. So visualize yourself once you have made it. What or how your life will look like when you have made the right choices, implemented them well, and you see it unfolding in front of you. Okay. So once you have made note of that, go on to write a very fun yet profound element in the in the process of decision making put down thanks for sharing that sushma of course it is wonderful to see you having made th through something beautiful and now once you have done that sushma please put down how will you celebrate your victory for all of you here what is your idea of celebration once you have achieved this Take your moment. It can be anything from treating yourself in the spa to having a meal, catching up with a friend to gifting yourself. It can be any, anything from a book to a Ferrari. It's your choice. The cost or the fancy gift is not the point here. It is about telling yourself that you have made it and you are celebrating your little victory here the reason why we are doing it the more we train our mind to know that we are celebrating it will rewire our patterns to see victories in life the celebrations will change our neurology in such a way that we will attract more of wins in life but if we let it go the moment is lost and we have not recorded or acknowledged our victory powerfully enough for us to recreate it yet another time. Then it is more of a struggle 
one more time you have to slog your way out to make another decision come true and yet again if you let it let the moment go it is like a routine chore you know working for something working through something and working on and on and on on something but when we have a moment to celebrate it makes the experience so much more beautiful and as human beings we are all striving to gain those beautiful moments and cherish them so that is why it is important to include how you will celebrate right so have you all done that yes now i'd like you to take an a4 sheet paper if you have it with you right fold it into two vertically fold it into two yes and after you have folded it in half i'd like you to fold it in three not three folds just two folds so that you have three rows yes after that yes three fold it yeah no 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 not not halfway sushma yes midway and then flap it over yes yes absolutely yes perfect yes so that after you release it you will have six chunks on your paper yeah. right so what we are about to do is accessing our subconscious to make our dreams and decisions come alive that is what we will be doing so before getting into that part we will run through some elements which make the decision making a little more structured and then go into that process right so please let me know if you are able to see and view my screen as i share it Give me a moment, please. Beautiful. So now let's talk some business, the holistic art of decision making. So friends who have joined us a little later, we'll be going to be talking about how we bring in elements of management in terms of looking at it as a chunk each at a time in terms of achieving our goals, and how we draw from the world of psychology. of integrating our thinking with our feelings and therefore fueling our doing so the confluence of our thinking thinking center our heart center and our moving center we just did that integration at the beginning of our session through a process which rewired us our uh, subconscious mind to be able to bring a beautiful marriage of all these centers to enable us to take our journey forward and what we will be discussing at the end is bringing in an element of spirituality because sometimes we feel stuckness in spite of cognitively understanding how to make some decisions also if we have looked at it from a psychological point of how can we manifest them either using modalities from nlp or transactional analysis or metaphors of movement anything for that matter beyond that there is still a nudge that needs to be given to help us move forward and that's where we may draw in from the divine energy around which will give us that extra mileage so that is why a holistic approach to decision making is something that will help us see the light at the end of the tunnel so this is a situation that we find ourselves most often in you know a whole bombardment of choices that need to be made in our day to day lives so in psychology decision making is regarded as a cognitive process resulting from the selection of a belief or a course of action among several possible alternatives it could be either rational or irrational because most often decisions are not based on an activity alone decisions are to be made on how to be also at times right so it can be rational or irrational so decision making process is a reasoning process based on assumptions of values preferences and beliefs of the decision maker so if you have noticed yourself in some kind of a struggle at times as to whether to choose a or b ask yourself 
what is it that is going to be guiding this decision. So we will look at some structure in how to go about that. So we are basing today's discussion on a concept that was provided by Herbert Simon. So he termed the phrase called bounded rationality to express the idea that human decision making is limited by available information. Information as you all know is the key resource that we all have today. So available time and the mind's information processing ability. So put together the information that we have, the time that we have and the mind's ability to process this information. So these are the three elements that will enable an effective decision that is being made. So bounded rationality, we are bound by the rational decisions that we can take given the time that we have, the knowledge that we have, the information that we have and the skill that we have to process this. Are you all with me so far? Give me a thumbs up so I will know. Beautiful. Thank you. So further, psychological research has identified individual differences between two cognitive styles, the maximizers and the satisficers. So these are the two elements that we will be talking about from a management perspective. So the maximizers try to make an optimal decision, whereas satisficers simply try to find a solution that is good enough. So we are going to be spending a little more time on that. Before that, just some facts on Herbert Simon. He is a Nobel Prize winner and that is why his, his concept is so much so valid and relevant with regard to the decision, you know, decision making topic that we are discussing today. So he was an American economist, political scientist and a cognitive psychologist whose primary research was in decision making with organizations within organizations and is best known for his theories of bounded rationality and satisficing. We spoke about bounded rationality. We will be soon looking at what satisficing means. He received the Nobel Prize in Economics in 78 and the Turning Award in 1975. So there are some other facts, the, the disciplines that he comes from, how he holistically again combines various fields of cognitive science, computer science, political science, management, administration, and all of that and found his rational way of making a decision. So coming back to our focal area of satisficing. So this, my friends, is nothing but the happy marriage between a decision that gives you satisfaction and something that is sufficient enough for you to go forward. Now give me a word, you know, describing yourself in life. Are you the person who wants to get maximum out of something that you are engaged in? Would you want the optimal results for your decisions? Or do you go in for choosing something that is good enough? What is the kind of person that you are in your real time? You could choose your personal life or your professional life as well to share. Just put in a word so we'll know or even feel free to unmute and share a word or two. I would say both depending on the situation. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. What about others? Optimal use of resources. Fine. I'd like some responses from others as well. Keep it coming. But we'll begin with what we already have got right now. Jason, that's a classical ex example of an economic man. You know, that's the model of an economic man getting the optimal results out of the available resources, right? And uh, what we also have is the social man, which we are not discussing right now. But let me also put that out. We have the economic man. We have the social man. The social man is one who is looking at people, right? His decisions are oriented on the people perspective, how to please others, how to involve others in decision making. So he puts people in front of his needs, right? So he's looking at the group's need or, you know, the family, friends and other people in his life, their needs. And we also have what we call as the administrative man, right? Who's managing something between economics, something between social setup and then coming at 
you know something that works from both worlds and uh, what sushma gave in terms of something i also want something that is op- optimal at the same time something that is good enough as well right that is, is exactly our point of discussion in terms of satisfying like you see on the on the board it is a combination of feeling satisfied with something that is good enough right the maximum benefits that you can get with the available sources and therefore which will meet your needs at a given time right now why herbert simon's uh, work one apprise was this my friends is closest to being a realist otherwise as an optimist you want ideal results all the time which is great however not practically possible in all situations and therefore when we have these high expectations of churning out results after the results 100% there is bound to be some kind of failure i'm not saying entirely the project will fail but i'm saying in terms of the maximum result that you one is expecting there can be a drop in that so expectations may not be fully met when we stick on to optimal results most of the time and when we look at the other idea of a pessimist i never get what i want these are the dialogues that are running in their mind i never get what i want things will never go my way things never happen as per the planned trajectory there will always be you know room for losses there will always be something that is bungling up at the end something will uh, you know uh, backfire so this is the pessimist view however a realist learns the art of working with what is available and bringing the best possible outcome in given situations so that is why satisfying struck a chord with realists and that's what my friends has worked for many leaders in the past and therefore will have a good chance of working well with us too if you notice take those areas in your life where you demand where you are demanding the most maybe as a husband as a son or as a daughter as a daughter in law if you are demanding too much in one area maybe as someone from your house uh, helps when your expectations are unrealistic there is bound to be some amount of dissatisfaction there disappointment there so what is the key to freedom from dis- disappointment is an attitude of choosing to go with satisfying model is that ringing in some some amount of understanding here right okay thank you thanks for that response so we will be moving on to why we emphasize on decision making so that this is what we will be looking at not to get hit that you know optimal result all the time but somewhere striking a a sense of fulfillment with what we can do with the given resources so why are we even discussing decision making right now because when we are faced with a tough decision it's common to feel all of this that we are going to state and most often all miseries in life anything that we are dealing with wherever we are feeling stuckness in life it is due to some kind of a decision that we either make or we have failed to make right so what happens when this occurs there are times we feel overwhelmed about it stressed or anxious about it feeling a lot wound up with energies pressurized confused distracted tired i'd like you to take one area or one event or one person with whom you are feeling any of this you know your transactions with people if there is one person or one area in life where you are feeling overwhelmed if you are feeling a certain set of sense of stuckness if you are feeling anxious around someone if you are feeling pressurized or confused put that person or that situation name it can you take a moment to do that because otherwise these will be just grand ideas right so when we relate it to real time people and events in our lives that's when we take back home the value of our learning truly 
you do not have to necessarily share in the chat box this is for you to you know record in your journals what are those people overwhelmed is positive is that what you're asking here we are talking about overwhelmed in terms of how you're feeling anxious around someone it's too much to take you know dealing with a person something like that of course sometimes you can even feel overwhelmed in a good way which becomes smothering you know if especially moms around grown up sons if they continue to show that much of you know care have you eaten you know the moms calling you all the time in the middle of some important work have you eaten have you had this have you done that are you fine that that excessive care also becomes somewhat suffocating right so that smothering can become overwhelming as well so if around someone if you're feeling that way name all those people list those people who are making you feel this way confused and distracted tired some people may suck your energy you know in their conversations if they keep downloading their issues problems on to you all the time then they can be viewed as these energy vampires right so if you're feeling that way note them down so as you have done that we shall move forward now because why we are doing this is because indecision can have a negative impact on how you are feeling it's important to learn strategies for making positive decisions in tough situations so this will be the breakthrough we will be cause causing through our session today right so my invitation is to make a sense of what are the people what are the situations that are causing us this indecisiveness and how do we get a tool or an impetus to make our bet decisions of better quality and therefore how we will implement it in life which brings us peace right so while you may, may not be able to guarantee the outcome of a decision before you make it at least you know you put a lot of careful thought into it that's that's the yardstick right it's not about whether we are seeing whether we are winning going through that goal post or not but at least have i got all the elements right in reaching there that's that's that will be our indicate right so five ways to improve our decision making picked generally from the managerial perspective management perspective so we consider what is at stake the issue at hand okay what is it identifying like you have already put down what is that area that you are dealing with where you need to make a decision so the first step is identifying the problem at hand so what is the problem that you are facing in a situ situation what is the issue at stake the second step to navigate through will be assembling facts which is gathering information that you need to make the best decision possible right so you look for your scenario the premises on which you will make your decision so it is nothing but scanning the environment for information so the quality of your decision making will depend on only the quality of the information that you have right that is why you put on what are the skills that you have to make something happen right in our in our worksheet when you started right then you will identify the alternatives so if you are choosing to go to a place say that is 20 kilometers away from where you are right now say let's say from home to office if you choose to you if you have, you have made choice of your destination so whether you will take the bus whether you will take your car you, whether you will help ask someone to drop you off there or whatever is a mode of transportation whether you will take the metro so once you have decided these are the various options either i could walk all the way there cycle all the way use a motorbike car public transport or have someone drop me once you have put down all of these alternatives make an evaluation of what are the advantages and disadvantages in each of these options right so you consider each op option and evaluate that is the pros and cons that they are talking about and when we talk about pros and cons we are talking about the cost benefit analysis that we will be making what is the cost involved if i choose this alternative a and what is the benefit that i will get vis-a-vis -vis the cost let's say this 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 example of how i will get to the office if i walk all the way the advantage is 
I will not be spending as much money, right, on fuel or on the taxi. However, the cost that I will incur is the strain, you know, the physical exertion of walking all the way there, right? It may be a harsh sun, the time, the traffic, the pollution. So walking physically, is it easy or difficult on me? Similarly, you choose the other option and weigh the pros and cons. I may get very quickly to the workspace using a cab. However, the costs involved are pretty high. Then if I own my own vehicle and then take that, a lot of peace at the time when I want to start, when I will reach there, all of that is sorted. I have the comfort and luxury of my own vehicle. But driving down, you know, these accelerators and brakes, this whole lot of times I will be doing that. If that is causing me stress, if I have something else to do at that time, then I might as well take a cab or use someone to drop it. So look at all this, parking lots. So these will be the evaluation. So similarly, this is a very crude example that we have discussed. All other areas, if I'm taking, if I'm planning for my child's wedding, so whether I will engage in myself in terms of taking care into all of those departments or whether I will have a wedding planner do it. If I have a wedding planner do it, the costs are high, but in terms of relaxation at the wedding, I, I have more allowance to enjoy at the wedding, right? However, do I have the funds for it? So these are the things that you will be looking at each option exclusively and weigh it in terms of its cost and the benefits. And then what you do is choose the best possible option out of the alternatives that you have. And then after you narrow in on one, you put it to test. Yes, pros and cons to be listed. A great way to zero in on the most suitable or the closest that comes, you know, in terms of satisfying model that we discussed. So that, that's the idea. So we don't always go at the best option. Sometimes even if the best option is there, we still go in for maybe something that is good enough for us because the best option may be too expensive or too strain us. So we will settle off for maybe point number two or three because that may give us some room, you know, to, to chill, to be, uh, to not burn a hole in our pocket. You know, sometimes we will not choose the best option always. The ideal idea is to choose the best. But Herbert Simon made a deviation from this traditional approach and said you don't have to always go for the best. You can settle for something that is good enough and be at peace with it. Right? That's why I'm presenting both views. This is a traditional management view. And what Herbert's, Herbert Spice, Simon gave was a more contemporary view to decision making. One second. Um, yeah. So what, what are we looking at, you know, from a more casual perspective, in, instead of that, you know, uh, very technical way of looking at decisions? How do we go about this? Like a breeze. Keeping calm. That's the first standpoint, right? After we've got through these steps, keep calm. It's easy to feel stressed out and anxious when you're facing a tough choice. But you may tend to, you may want to rush through decisions. But the key is to be calm. Do not let stress get the better of you. Hit upon anything that may give you a sense of, you know, uh, security and the freedom to make the best choice. And yoga, meditation, talking to friends, being at the beach, anything that gives you that ambience to make uh, you know relaxed choice go for that then give yourself some time we put in a time element in in terms of even our smart goals right also do not be harsh on your on yourself you know pressurizing yourself with that element of time itself give yourself a leverage to be able to work out things through that span and also give you that benefit of an extra grace time so it's hard to think clearly under pressure and sometimes your first idea isn't always the best one, right? So give yourself that kind of time and a cushion to go for your best option. And we discussed elaborately about choosing the cost and benefit, you know, between them and then go for the best choice. So analyze your, your environment, scan it, go for the advantages and disadvantages of each option and then make the best choice. So think about your goals and values. So we will spend a little more time on this, my friends. There are times when we, we um, experience headaches, right? Especially the classic 
example of migraine attacks, right? If you, if any of you have experienced that yourselves or noticed or looked at people who go through that, this is a good awareness that we are about to look at. Why migraines? See, technically from medical perspective, it has its different explanations, okay? But when we look at it psychologically, all diseases are autoimmune. That's what we believe in. They are psychosomatic. Psycho to do with the mind and neurology and somatic to do with the body. So what we think, how we think has a definite impact on how it reacts or shows in our, in our body. So in that, going by that philosophy, migraines are the result of an internal conflict that we go through in terms of the decisions and the choices that we make in life or the choices and decisions that we are unable to make in life. And especially if we dive deeper, we notice the conflict is most often to do with values. If the decision that you are about to make is not in congruence with your core values, there is so much of a rupture that it acts like an axe on your head and creates this migraine. So to just put it differently, Say, for example, if as a child you have been told not to watch TV, don't waste time, don't indulge in these petty pleasure activities. If, if maybe if you come from a very orthodox family with the father or, you know, fatherly figures in your home who insisted or, you know, kind of banned you from watching movies, let's say. Now, this guy works hard, gets his degrees, is now married comfortably and is taking his wife out for a movie, let's say. It is a good movie, it is a decent film, everything about the movie is nice, the ambience of the theatre, everything is conducive and he is relaxed as he goes into the movie theatre. But the moment he starts watching the movie, there is some kind of a surge of a disturbance in his head and he starts experiencing huge headaches, pounding ones, you know, like the, the migraine attacks. It is very natural for people to think that it is the result of these Dolby systems, um, you know, the, the jarring sound. However, everybody in the theater does not develop one. So if you look at the cause, the, the headache is not, see, if all other factors remaining, like he's not been out in the sun, he's not, he's hydrated himself enough, if all that is fine, and then if there is a headache, the, uh, I, the good chances remain that the migraine is coming from a space like this. Internally, he has a parental voice message saying, it's wrong, what you're doing is wrong. You know, that, that three-year-old, five-year-old child who constantly kept hearing, what are you doing? You should not be watching movies. You should be, if he came from an orthodox Christian family, let's just, just, just say movies were not, you know, it was satanic. If that's a belief in his household, he continues to believe that Acha, I'm doing something against the values, core values of my parental home, right? And he's still cognitively thinking that he's doing a good thing, you know, taking his wife out for a movie or he's out with his friends, let's say. But this internal conflict happens without his awareness in his head. One part of it, him is saying, let's chill, let's relax, let's watch a, watch a movie. And he is unaware that his childhood uh, experiences of his parental messages are acting in conflict with that action of his. And therefore, the resultant migraine. Have you got this, my friend? Right. So most often... There is a lot of disturbance we all go through when we are making crucial decisions in life. Migraine is just an example. People can be ex experiencing unexplainable neck pains, you know. They may go in for all the CT scans, the MRIs, nothing on earth will tell you what is wrong. The doctors will give you a clean sheet saying your, you know, spinal cord is all perfect and everything else is perfect. Medically, you are fit. So they can't quite explain why you are going through these pains. It can be in the back, it can be in the, in the neck, shoulders, chest pain also for that matter, knees. If someone is not being able to move forward in life, he will experience it as knee pain. And the doctors will not be able to tell you why. Because something is holding you back from moving forward. If you are experiencing guilt, you know, say for example, something like premarital sex. If children are involving, indulging in that as teenagers there is this huge conflict going on family values say do not indulge in this you know hold back but the children may indulge because that's how that may be the uh, prevalent norm in the in the culture that the child is living in so there is this huge internal conflict happening and therefore the child may experience 
may be a, a, a you know abdominal pain maybe some you know back pain because that guilt is reflecting as showing up on the back i can't you know lift my head up in the society it may show up as neck pain so the decisions that we make do i do this do i not do this do i when i hold back when i move forward so these are very crucial decision making you know areas and if they are not in alignment with our ethics and values you will experience disruptions in your health so yes think about your goals and values now moving forward one second i yes so consider all the possibilities making a decision can result in several different outcomes and not all of them may be obvious so look at your blind spots which you will not be able to do so seek help seek supervision right have someone to look at it from an upper view or from a different perspective and help you come out with other possibilities as well so that will take the decision making to an all new height then talk it out with others this is why you put in that element do you remember who are the other significant people who are who are going to be journeying with you in your life so it can be very helpful to get another person's perspective on your issue particularly if they have faced a similar decision in their own life and keep a journal if you feel like you are on a bit of an emotional roller coaster jason was also asking about overwhelm no is it in a positive way you know these are these roller coasters you no know? sometimes they are positive but that itself can become very overwhelming difficult for you to handle it can be negative then it makes it all the more worse so all of this we keep going through in our lives right it's a spectrum so it may help us to keep track of your feelings and write them what are those decisions which make me happy in life what are those which make me feel guilty when uh, do i feel angry about it if i made you know say, say if my core value is integrity and in in my office if i made to fudge some accounts you know there will be so much of an internal disturbance my value system is saying be honest my parents have taught me that and my account head is saying fudge or forge the accounts so that is a decision i am making cognitively i've got to follow what is said by the management but my ethics is preventing me from doing it but i'm doing it never nevertheless and experiencing pain or shame but if i don't do it maybe it's costing my job or my promotion or my salary right so everywhere my friends your happiness is depending largely on the choices that you make you do not want to compromise your on your integrity you may have to lose your job you may choose to compromise on your integrity and then lose your values so it's it's these are all decisions that we make on a day to day basis so write down and then you will know how to sail through it with you know with so much more clarity and plan how to tell others also that's why the celebration also comes you know when i'm doing this if i'm making other people part of my journey then there there is more scope for the celebration so if you think someone may have a bad response to your decision think through what their reaction is likely to be and plan for it so that victory is more on your side you know when you eliminate resistance and put yourself in their shoes to help you think of a good way to manage the situation so when you are empathizing again you will notice such a these are the kind of opposition that i am likely to get and you make way for all of that helping you steer forward in a much better manner so that is it my friends so when we are looking at how to navigate through tough tough times so we rethink our options if we are up against a lot of pressure right and then we also have one good tool right now is to go for the satisfying choice rather than the most optimal one right so if you're feeling overwhelmed with negative feelings because you're facing you know a crucial decision it is important to look after yourself you know that's where seeking mental help comes in emotional well being is predominantly important while making decisions right that is why i would suggest go for therapy take it to a trained counselor or a psychological therapist who may be able to look at your your self from a neutral standpoint and offer you those solutions that may foster your emotional well being so if you're finding an indecision go to a counselor or go to a coach who may be able to help you you know or offer that uh exclusive perspective from their learnings so just a recap of what we have been talking about identify the issues scan the environment evaluate your alternatives and then choose or arrive at the best decision possible now my friends take that paper
take that paper you have folded out you have six columns quickly we will be doing this activity see all all along you have been hearing me out and fed your cognitive understanding of the topic right now let's invoke our subconscious mind in bringing out how we think how we feel and what we are going to do right the first column draw see we are going to be looking at a hero's or a heroine's journey okay through our life so draw the hero or the heroine in the first blank N number it okay you have six blocks so one two three four five six number it the first block put down depict yourself we are not writing here you have you're done with the writing you're going to now access your subconscious so draw a hero or a heroine in the first block and when you have done that let me know okay and if you have drawn yourself as the hero or the heroine of your story move on to the second block where you will be putting down your major decision that you want to take right now the goal that you want to achieve right now the decision that you will be making in order to make your goal come true draw that i repeat you will draw your goal the decision that you need to make to achieve your goal draw that drawing has a very therapeutic effect it's not about how well we draw it's not the drawing skills my friends don't bother about the drawing skills it is about reflections which are accessed beyond your cognitive understanding once you have done that in the third column write down draw the skills that you have already to make those goals come true draw those skills what are the skills that you now have to achieve these goals If you are done, put a thumbs up. Yes, and then the next column. Put down what are the skills that you need to get. Right, draw that. What are the skills that you need to get to make it happen? once you have done that in the fifth column put down what are the things that you need to give up what are the qualities that you need to give up in order to make your goal come true how will you make better decisions in life when you give up these things draw that and after you have done that the last segment draw how will your life be after you become that person who makes these kind of decisions when your goal has been achieved what will your life look like how will you celebrate after you have achieved your goals Then what? 
So have you done that? Do any of you need a little more time? Yeah. So last column is how, how will you celebrate? How will your life look like? Draw that. So now look at all of those elements. Run through that journey. Who are you? The hero, the heroine of your life. What is your goal? What kind of a decision maker do you need to be to achieve all your goals? Look at what are the skills, resources that you now have to make your goals come true. What are the skills that you need to acquire, the resources that you need to get in order to achieve, manifest your goals? What are the qualities, the indecisiveness, all of those obstacles that are coming into the way of becoming a good decision maker? What do you need to give up to become that achiever? And finally, once you have become that, how will you achieve your goals when your goals are manifested how will you celebrate them how do you celebrate your victories the victorious you the hero or the heroine of your life so now looking back at our presentation if we look at the steps we look at the issue the problem for which we need to set our goals decisions we we'll scan through our environment we look at what are the resources that we have, the alternatives that we have. We look at how to discard what is not useful for us, give up what is not working for us. And then we choose the best alternative. We retain what we need to get, right? We acquire all that we need, we do not have right now. And then we will implement it, put it to use. And finally, we will see the feedback, how it has worked for us. And we know that we have won and we will celebrate thereafter. So this is our journey, right? So I hope if you put your area that you have chosen and work through it in a methodical way, you will see clarity in accomplishment, right? So that's about it. And spending a little more time on one area and we will wind up this session. We talked about values, ethics, conflicts, which comes in the way of our decisions and manifesting our goals. So if we look at some one part of us says do this and, and another part of us say don't do this this is what we are most often faced with no in terms of our decision making which comes as a challenge so let's take a moment to close our eyes and involve in a practice one more time yes so close your eyes visualize that part of you which is saying do this which wants something Put it in your right palm or any, any hand for that matter, right? Choose a hand, visualize it there and choose your other hand and place the other part of you which is saying no, which doesn't want you to do it. So between a decision, a part of you says yes or do it. And a part of you says, no, don't do it. So visualize each of those parts in different palms. Now, once you have done that, look at that part of you, which is preventing you from moving forward. Look at what is the good intention behind this part stopping you. Ask that part, what is it that you have in you that is protecting me? Allow it to give your answers from your subconscious. And when you have got those answers, thank that part for protecting you. Let the palms face each other. Integrate them at your own convenient pace. The goodness in the part that wants you to do something and the goodness in that part which does not want you to do it. Allow them to talk to each other and help you make peace with the choice that you are about to make. Integrate them in such a way that they will allow you to make the best possible decision for you. Invoke 
that element that you believe in it can be nature god cosmos any name that you want to give it the higher force that is operating beyond and above us invite that divinity to bless you guide you as you integrate parts of you to help you drive yourself forward in making the best decision possible for not only you for all the significant people in your life and with that cosmic guidance take in this quality within you to allow you to make these decisions not only with this one area but now that you have this technology to invite the divine to guide you to integrate the opposing parts and choosing the best alternative possible bring this ability in you into all your areas of decision making and once you have incorporated the skill and resource to do this thank the universe for allowing you to be able to do this process and all the people here who have contributed to the collective energy for making this possible for us and on that note when you have filled your heart center thinking center and moving center with this the source and guidance come back on at your own convenient pace and on that note i would like to thank all of you for this fantastic opportunity to connect and deliver what i have thank you so thank much you. thank you so much indu yes. it was a great session especially for the decision making part it was uh, out of the world and uh, uh, great to know about the five factors and one of the thing which i i wrote down uh, mm -hmm. to ask you at the end of the session you cleared it uh, at the last part okay. it was between taking a decision between intuition and realistic uh, decision okay. Okay. so if we have something intuition and uh, like we want to take a step and our mind is telling take a step but mm -hmm. the realistic factor is not allowing us to take that step mm -hmm. but still we jump into it and then uh, it fails uh, brutally mm -hmm. so we would be complaining our uh, our decision making skills and uh, we would be complaining ourselves i mean uh, negative factors will come in so you have cleared at the last part uh, how to uh, get over it uh, thank you so much uh, again if anybody else who want to go ask this uh, any other questions the floor is open uh, thank you so much again ms indu if anybody wants to ask yeah githika you can go ahead okay uh, hi indu thank you for the wonderful session I just have a small question uh, regarding the people you mentioned uh, while uh, writing the decision. So these people mean who can help you in the decision. Uh, you know they can help you work out, or like uh, if you are taking a very bold decision, your family would be affected. Something like yes. that. So yes. or that I got confused on that. I I told you, you could look at it. you know from a case by case uh, perspective if you're looking at one area of your life and you think that these people will be very crucial in furthering this decision put them or that decision that that i take these are the people who will be most affected by those decisions choose feel free to depict those people so it is a choice that you will be making right and also uh, there is something that i will invite you to look up in terms of ethics grid okay this is a concept from transaction analysis where they're talking okay. about how you bring in ethics grid where every decision that you will make you will put it on a matrix who are the people who mm -hmm. are involved like say if i'm choosing to go take a new job from a different city my husband my daughter my parents you know and my current clients mm. so all of them i will put in this decision is it empowering for them is it protecting them so these are the questions i will ask is my decision empowering me is my decision empowering mm -hmm. the others in in my life the next thing am i respecting myself with a decision that i am making 
am i disrespecting myself or disrespecting others like if my if i have a very young daughter in say uh, uh, kindergarten if i choose to just go off to another city am i respecting her need as a child as a daughter so if it is not mm-hmm. ticking then i will not go for that if it is if if i have a grown up daughter who can manage by herself then if there is a tick then i will look at considering that option right and the other thing is uh, what is the relationship status like relationship with others in in this so if we look at the ethics grid it will give us a lot more clarity on whether to go for a decision or to hold back or to rework the decision okay. hope that thank that you helps clear is my point yeah thank you thank you Krishna? Yes, awesome, awesome, Indu. So I have some notes, and I wrote few uh, things which I loved very much. Like, uh, if you be more, uh, if you create more resistance, it will persist. Absolutely. So few things, yeah, like uh, the conflict and between the non congruency, yeah. and uh, manifest the importance of manifestation and visualization. I'm, I'm learning to get there. so yes it's a great yes yes it's a great uh, talk great session and the ways you showed the two different uh, perspectives of making decisions the traditional way and uh, uh, i don't i don't recall what exactly you call it because i was writing other points <laughs> this is a more contemporary way of looking at things you know to yeah. look at what is good enough than yes. the best uh, Option. and the rewiring of uh, subconscious awesome great and the exercise you took us through was the six quadrants six. yes yes it's awesome it's awesome and that's where i was like when you said you can draw anything and i'm like don't bother what i'm drawing colors draw it yeah, absolutely in fact uh, uh, one thing which will take it to an even deeper uh, level of depiction is to use your non dominant hand if we use our right um, right more often if we yeah. use our left that is our non dominant hand yes. which has direct access to our right brain uh, you know uh, yes. the uh, subconscious will be even more accessible when we use the non dominant hand that's why in expressive arts therapy when people come for psychological therapy using arts we mm-hmm. encourage them to draw using their non dominant hand so that their subconscious will give them all the cues and re- reflect in an even deeper fashion so there it's not about the you know the, the beauty in the drawing it's about what is getting uh, you know thrown out or put out or depicted that's what matters more so then when you said this a question uh, is that is that uh, applicable in whatever we do so in it's they say like if you use your other non dominant hand mm-hmm. it creates uh, one minute hmm. or uh, i don't know how you say it but yes it 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 is it is helping us so like you know brushing your teeth with left hand yeah, yeah yes 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 that that's the easiest uh, way they say like no brainer but it helps us access the no, uh, subconscious subconscious they say uh, how to activate use your non dominant hand to brush if yeah. you're cooking if you're picking up even a glass of water if you usually pick with your right hand you, you place the bottle of water onto your left side of the desk so that you use more of your left hand so that okay. the right brain gets activated so that is true yes okay okay yes so yeah uh, i'm trying even that with my even my kids they i don't i didn't tell them anything but okay. looking at me they are also trying this beautiful beautiful and they don't do what we tell them to do no they only do what we what they watch us doing yes. so that's that that's even more impactful agree they agree. do they will and, replicate whatever you do yes and uh, i i have seen few of my known people have suffering from migraine and mm-hmm. really loved the way you have put this i can share with them as well Please the do. conflict part yes, yes. definitely um, so yeah that's all from my side one last thing i would ask is how important or how difficult is it in in fact to change our values and beliefs um most of the time it is something that we have picked up subconsciously 
looking at our parents and the uh, growing up years of our life the significant primary caregivers like grandparents or uncles aunts sibling older siblings so till the age of 7 usually you know whoever are were our primary caregivers our value system is most often uh, you know a reflection of the parental home whatever the beliefs around it were and some core values we also with our adult now uh, resources that we have we do pick in some some more elements to it however the base is what we have formed as a, as a child most often uh, it is nlp itself has techniques to address the question that you had just asked uh, there is a layer seven step uh, you know process where nine steps actually we where you ch- you can't make directly changes at the values you will have to go through the environment the beliefs the behavior you know uh, uh, attitude identity values and then go on all the way up to the identities make changes at the identity level and there also there is invoking an element of divine and spirituality there and only with that spiritual higher forces guidance you will be able to be successful in making changes in all these levels so that is possible yes of course you can incorporate a new value uh, with cognitive and subconscious programming it is possible Okay, so it goes uh, from uh, below or f- from top. Uh, it the process will actually see that it will go from the lower ring okay. and then all the way up and then again come back uh, integrating that uh, learning and then okay. seeing it from the point where we started. Great. It's a beautiful process. Yes. Uh, of making changes at the identity level, actually. Great. Awesome. Awesome. I have few of uh, already messages coming in. Can you please share the recording? We couldn't join and this and oh. that. So yes, people will be watching the recording, uh, which is uh, which will be there available. Okay. Yes. So thank you, Indu. Thanks so awesome much session. once again for the opportunity. That's why we are giving a bouquet for uh, Miss Indu, although yes. we cannot uh, directly give. <laughs> but so much sure. <laughs> valued more yes i i get it jason thank you if anybody else thank want you to for being a wonderful host thanks yeah if anybody else want to ask any questions the floor is open for another 2 minutes then we will be closing it hopefully there are no other mm-hmm. questions i think so sakti you want to ask something or say something hi yeah yes thanks a lot thanks a lot for this amazing platform first time i'm joining in uh, part of yes. this uh, umm uh, yes. hi indu ma'am after attending your session in umm today when i saw the message in this family talks i was feel that i want to attend this session for sure thanks a lot uh, but uh, yesterday also i faced some issue today also i'm not able to visualize when you are telling that go and do visualize that was uh, dragging me also the drawing part i was feeling like then i started writing it because after seeing my pic i was feeling so <laughs> impressed i thought okay let me write it out so i wrote on this things these also i was facing that one is there Quite any way i can improve that are, uh, too much into thinking no a cognitive uh, understanding will uh, prevent us from accessing the subconscious Uh, uh for that matter they say hypnosis is nothing but bypassing the cognitive factor and then uh you know accessing the subconscious so if we are okay. if we are asking you know if we are too alert sometimes like how does this work will this work uh what are the changes that i need to make if i make these changes how will it uh, affect me if we are you know somewhere in that area itself then going behind and believing things will work becomes a challenge it will happen uh, shakti ji no worries uh, all you have to do is train yourself to quiet in your uh, uh, mind to allow lesser number of thoughts to uh, distract you meditation will help you know uh, okay. largely uh, to okay ma'am thanks a lot i would like to connect one to one with you ma'am and just i will I'll send you the message yeah thanks a lot yeah thank you thank you so much thank you again thank you uh, thank you shushma and thank you jason thanks a lot for this session <laughs> Thank, thank you Shakti i have seen you in uh, umm and it's good to see you here as well thank you yeah, thank you thank you so we will be closing the session soon before that we will be announcing the speaker for the next session julia macmillan she is joining from uk uh, she is the managing director for the learning quest uh, it's again a training she is a training coach 
She's MSc in Human Resource Development from Portsmouth University, mentor, coach, speaker. So she will be joining live next Thursday. And if there is a change in timing, we will be updating it in the group as well. So next Thursday, uh, six o'clock in the evening, we will be meeting again live for the next session. Thank you so much again, all the attendees. Thank you, Sushma. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. God bless you all. Have a great day. Yes. Thank you, Indu, once again, Anupama, Geetika, Shakti, everyone. And those who would be watching it later as a recording, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Good night. Bye. Good night. Be blessed. Be positive. Bye-bye.